So two rules you're going to use very frequently in taking derivatives are going to be the product rule and the quotient rule. And I grouped these into one category because many times you can convert between one and the other. So this is another uh, rule you're going to use when you have to either multiply or divide functions. So first let's start with the product rule. The product rule states that if you have any function that can be written as the product of two functions, let's say f of x and g of x, when you take the derivative of them, you have to follow the specific rule. You get f prime of x times g of x plus f of x times g prime of x. You can always remember this as the derivative of the first times the second plus the second times the or the second times the derivative of the first. However, you want to do that, like there. The quotient rule is used when you have a quotient of two functions. So your function can be written as a quotient f of x over g of x. Quotient rule states you have f prime of x g of x minus f of x g prime of x all over g of x squared. So in this case with the product rule, since you have a sum, the order in which you do these two terms doesn't matter. So just make sure you do the derivative of one times the other function, and then the derivative of it times the other, and in which way you put them doesn't matter. In the quotient rule, though, because you have a subtraction sign, the order clearly does matter. So you need to make sure that you do the derivative of the top first times the bottom, minus the derivative of the bottom times the top, all over the bottom squared. You might have heard this using the low d high, high d low kind of thing. So those are the general rules for product and quotient rule. And I want to go through an example of why you might want to switch them from time to time. So let's do an example. Let's say you had the function x plus 3 um, over x. Now, one way you could do that is certainly by separating the fraction. In this case, that would be the best way to do that. But I want to show you that you can use qu uh, quotient rule or product rule for this. So first, let's do quotient rule because it appears as a quotient. So if we use the quotient rule up here, the derivative of the top, the derivative of x plus 3 is just 1 times the bottom minus the top itself times the derivative of the bottom, which is 1, all over the bottom squared. The bottom here is just x, so we have x squared. So here we get x minus, make sure you distribute correctly. This negative sign needs to distribute to both of those terms. So you have minus x minus 3 all over x squared. You can see here that your x's cancel out. And you're left with negative 3 over x squared. So that was using the quotient rule. I want to show you that you can get the exact same thing by doing the product rule. Now, in order to do the product rule, your function needs to be a product. That's pretty simple to do in this case because you have something like x plus 3 times x to the negative 1. Remember that something on the bottom of a fraction is the same thing as it having a negative power. So this function right here is the exact same as this function, but now if we want to take the derivative of that one, we're going to use product rule. So the product rule, we'll use this formula here. We get 1 times x to the negative 1 plus <clears throat> the derivative of x to the negative 1, we need to use the uh, power rule. So we have x plus 3 times the derivative of this, which would be negative x to the negative 2. Okay, so let me write these as fractions here. We have 1 over x. Uh, this is going to be minus because we have a negative sign here. x plus 3 over x squared. You can see now that to, to combine these, we need a common denominator. The common denominator between x and x squared would just be x squared. So we multiply this one by x over x. And we get x minus x plus 3 
all over x squared. And you can see this is turning into the exact same thing we had here. These x's will cancel out and you'll get a negative 3. So anytime you have a quotient, you could really turn it into a product and use product rule. But that is how you use both the product and the quotient rule for a variety of problems. So when you practice this on your own, think about which functions you might think are easier to do with the product rule or quotient rule and use that on your test. So this is another differentiation method, product and quotient rule.